when treating patellar tendinopathy jumpers knee or even trying to make a healthy patellar tendon more resilient to load, we should look at how long the patellar tendon takes to adapt and how long of a refractory period before it will respond to another training session. We often talk about this with muscle tissue. If you want to get a muscle bigger, you need a certain number of uh, sets in terms of volume and you need to give it a certain rest period, which might be multiple days. But what do we know about the patellar tendon and how long we should train it and how long we should rest it? A 2012 study by Paxton and others looked at engineered ligaments and the effects of stretch frequency, amplitude, and duration. They looked at the cellular response of ERK-1-2, which is an important protein in connective tissue function, and they found the optimal stretch duration was 10 minutes and that after that, the cells became refractory. So what does this mean? This means I'm doing, if I'm doing a squat workout here, the first 10 minutes of squat loading, that's when I'm getting adaptation on the patellar tendon. If I'm going to squat for another 50 minutes, I'm not getting further adaptation on the patellar tendon. Now, squatting is not the most effective on the patellar tendon, but it is still loading the area. So after they found this out in the study, they attempted to find out how long cells were refractory. They found maximal ERK-1-2 phosphorylation returns following a six-hour rest period. So this example here, I did squatting in the morning. I came back after about six, seven hours, and now I'm doing a running workout. Running is not high patellar tendon load, so afterwards I actually went in the weight room and did some Spanish squats. So what I'm getting here is I'm getting twice the adaptation on the patellar tendon for patellar tendon health because I'm doing a heavy lift and now I'm doing an isometric hold. And I could have put this all in one session, but I wouldn't have got the same adaptation because it stopped adapting after 10 minutes and the six hour refractory period allowed me to get two st stimulus on the patellar tendon. So Keith Barr summed us up by saying repeated short periods of activity that load the connective tissue followed by long periods of rest appear to be optimum for connective tissue health and function. So if you want the patellar tendon to get more resilient, train it twice per day. Try it out. Enjoy.